Hey folks, welcome to Bill Fly Go. So, uh, bonus content, uh, our friends at Tannis realized we had one of the other brand uh, engine heat systems on the RV9. So we ran over to the hangar and we're um, replacing it. <laughs> so there'll be the Tannis engine heat on both aircraft. All right, we'll have a time lapse of that one as well and uh, some more details. All right, so the installation for the four-cylinder version of this kit and the six-cylinder version of this kit are very, very, very similar. So for the, the real details on how every, everything got put together, where everything went, why we went a certain way or another way, take a peek at the RV10. Uh, there's a two-video series, a two-part series on uh, real details on, on putting on the system. This is a two-, three, two or three-hour setup uh, installation. Um, this one is taking a little longer because we did remove the old system, the old the bands around the cylinders and the pads along the bottom. It wasn't hard to do, uh, surprisingly. It just took a little screwdriver as a as a as a wedge and a couple of taps of the hammer, and those pads on the bottom came off. And the top was just really undoing the uh, sort of the worm clamps and pulling pulling them off. We wanted to make sure to get that done before starting on the other side, and then we took the opportunity, uh, as we were going to split it into two days, to glue on the pads on the bottom and install the um, the heating elements uh, inside the cylinders, uh, you know, on that first day. And that way, everything got a chance to cure and and to to, to stick into place, so we weren't worried about anything moving uh, on day two. Uh, this is a heated hanger. Uh, I don't know how well these would cure uh, if it was out in the, you know, below freezing weather outside. Um, so if you are doing this in below freezing, maybe put, uh, put a little heating blanket or something over it. But uh, yeah, here we go. So in this four cylinder engine, we routed along the ignition leads uh, for the entire system. So we routed along the ignition leads for our threaded elements and we routed up to the ignition leads following the following the intake tube through the scupper line up to the ignition leads. And that's where we routed everything off of our plug and that's a 1062 plug bracket that we mounted our plug with on this particular engine. Um, I like this plug bracket because it's it's solid, right? It's not moving, so I can just reach in and plug it in. The previous system we had, it was sort of floppy, and it was, I had to somehow fit two hands into that oil opening to, to plug it in. So well, and nice. you're getting both hands dirty when you're having to go do it at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, we follow our ignition leads all the way through to our circuit protection device. Our singular junction, which we routed on the ignition leads there in the back, if you can't see it. And that follows around to the other side where we grab the other two. So the same thing, yeah. Threaded elements. Very simple system. Just follow the ignition leads, and you're pretty well covered. Nice. Looks good. So the system is installed. Um, the you can see on the time lapse coming up, we're just uh, adding a bunch of. Uh, zip ties to, to clean up the wiring and, and things like that. It's really important to make sure that there's nothing rattling around in there. And you saw how nicely it looked. Uh, as with any aircraft system, it is crucial that you do the system checks at the end. The manual for this covers them in, in detail. It's super, super easy. It just uses a multimeter that you already have. If you uh, do any kind of uh, aircraft maintenance, you just need to check the, the resistance and continuity. And we'll go into some detail there. Uh, do stay tuned for at the end of the video, I do cover why we decided to do that, right? Like, why are we swapping systems? Um, you know, why do we remove something perfectly good to put something else on? And uh, there's a good reason for that, which really fits with how we use the aircraft. So stick around till the end for that. Hey, folks. So the... RV9 Tannis heat install is complete. Um, I'm a big believer in always checking uh, before uh, plugging things in and always, right, like do, do the proper checks before <laughs> installing something. And in fact, it is in the instructions. So we're gonna, just like on the RV10, we're just gonna check the system and uh, show you how that goes. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check for continuity to ground, which we luckily have. We'll check both on the engine and on the fuse block. And we're gonna to look to make sure we don't have continuity between 
um, either one of our terminal leads. So we don't have anything here, don't have anything here, so we have no shorts to ground. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check our resistance across the leads. And we do have connection. We're going to go ahead and change our resistance measuring to make sure that we have a proper ohm reading of 55.7 which according to our electrical table in our instructions it's supposed to be 55.1 which is 100 percent within our tolerance it's like plus or minus 10 percent or something like plus that. or minus 10 percent of 55.1 perfect okay so that's good i think uh we can plug it in and that's where we'll go oh look at that and it lights up so we can sort of feel the, yep, it's warming up, right? Like that's warming up there, down here. Yep, definitely, <laughs> definitely warm. That one gets warm quick. And on the other side, yep. Yeah, all is good. Hey folks, so I know an obvious question is going to be, why did we replace our previous engine heat system with a Tannis heat system? Um, and the answer is really, we found over the last, uh, 2018 is when we started flying this, so that's five Wisconsin winters, <laughs> that the way we operate this aircraft is very much, um, it works better with an always on engine heat system. The other setup uh, is putting a lot of energy into the engine, a lot of wattage to get it hot fast. And they offset that by also needing a, a thermostat um, attached to the, to the oil pan. And that's fine. The problem is it's one extra component, right? Like one more, one more thing that could have an issue, but it cycles the temperature uh, on the on the engine on the bands in the case um, and depending on what the ambient temperature is it could be cycling that temperature through the dew point so it could be making it so that you're actually putting more moisture right like the moisture is condensing uh, more into the engine um, onto the you know internal metal components of the engine than a system that is uh, sort of designed to put the the right or designed for this engine uh, that is putting the amount of energy into it to keep it warm, to keep it above dew point and leave it there and not have to go too far and then racket it back and then go too far to racket it back. Uh, you know, there's concerns, um, of course I have no data on this, but there's concerns on, right, like how, how high is it going to get and is that going to be cooking the oil in the bottom, right? Are we going to have the coke on the bottom of, you know, sort of that crusty black uh, um, cooked off oil in the bottom of the oil pan, if it gets too hot, what is gonna to happen to the seals, things like that. Um, so we've looked at our uh, use case, our, you know, our parameters of how we've used the, the aircraft over the last five years, and we decided a system that we just plug in and forget and don't have to worry about it is putting the right amount of uh, heat, a right amount of power into the, the engine, into the crankcase to keep it at the right temperature works better for us. Don't have to worry about a cell phone switch, don't have to worry about Wi-Fi, don't have to worry about turning it on in time to go flying, right? Oh no, I got here and I forgot to turn on the, the oil, the, the engine heater. I need to sit here for two hours and, and wait for it to come up. Things like that. So uh, we reached out to Tannis and they very nicely offered to put a system into the RV9 and the RV10. There's another video on the RV10 um, where we go into a lot more detail. But uh, yeah, feel free to ask questions, right? Like, uh, you know you know how it is. I don't put a system, I don't put anything into my aircraft that I didn't want to, right? Like there's, there's no paid placement. I, I reach out to the vendors that I want to work with. All right, thanks folks. We'll see you soon.